We have a right to learning made for us, and that our school has a choice. We can either stay the same as all the other schools, or rise up above them. All schools need to change. Hello listeners, and welcome to Education Reimagined, our brand new podcast. It is a collaboration between students, two inspiring teachers, and a great scholar and author, Young Chow. I am Felipe Bautista, a fifth grader at Miami Country Day School in Miami, Florida, where stuff like this is possible, where a 10-year-old can produce his own podcast along with an Emmy-winning writer as his executive producer and a world-class scholar as his show's expert. So what do I mean by Education Reimagined and what is this program all about? Young Chow is a world-known author and educational professor from the University of Kansas. He wrote a book called World Class Learners and it's all about preparing students for the real world by encouraging students and teachers to engage themselves more globally and to really develop entrepreneurial skills and habits. He came to visit my school and wow! My class got the chance to spend some time with him and at the end of the day we had so much in our minds. I think that his ideas are really, really cool. Let's reimagine what our school should be and how students can learn and what teachers need to be capable of teaching. It's a whole new way of looking at schools and it is the focus of this podcast. We will hear from students, teachers, and young Chow himself. Again, I am your host, Felipe Bautista, and stay tuned with us. The future of education is creativity. Creativity is what will change the world. Education is life itself. You learn every day. Most schools don't even encourage children to develop their strengths. There is a huge shift between teachers telling what kids should do and we, the students, are deciding what we are doing for the day, but still taking the teacher's guidance. Education should be based on the student. Kids should learn what is needed in the world, instead of everyone learning to be doctors or lawyers. We need to have a bigger voice because it's our education and not anybody else's. We need to be allowed to take the responsibility for our own education. We are not robots. All schools need to change. They need to change now. Those were some of my classmates. Well, I think Young Xiao will agree with these ideas. He believes that getting kids to be more self-starting and entrepreneurial requires much more than adding a course in entrepreneurship to schools. It requires a paradigm shift. That is a direct quote. Thank you, Professor Chow, for joining us. Can you tell us first what a paradigm shift is and what the paradigm shift might look like? Thank you, Felipe. I'm so happy to be collaborating with you. This is really, really exciting. And I look forward to working with you all the time. You started by asking a wonderful and great question that everybody should think about. What kind of new education paradigm we need? I believe the old paradigm, which is supposed to impose the same knowledge, same skill on all children to suppress their individual uniqueness and great potential that was built for the industrial age is supposed to be dead. It's going to be gone. Uh, instead, we need a new paradigm that focuses on making sure every child becomes great in their unique way. Every child finds their passion. Every child uses the effort, the talent, and passion to create value for others. So that is the paradigm shift we need from uh, the employee-minded towards entrepreneur-minded. One day, I was with my parents in Las Vegas, and we took an Uber. And we got into this conversation with the Uber driver, and I just happened to ask him, how do you feel about the way students are being taught today? And he answered, school is a college before college sometimes. And, well, I mean, now that I think about it, it is kind of true, because the school's ultimatum is to get you to college. That's their only goal. Some schools may even ignore children's special abilities just to get you to college, because they won't care what you do after college. Their, their only goal is to get you to college. Dr. Zhao, what do you think about the idea of a college before college? And how do you think that w- will fit in with what you believe needs to be done? Wonderful again. Philip, I'm glad you're doing great research while you are taking a drive with an Uber driver. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what I meant by college before college. However, I concur with you that right now all schools seem to be preparing children to go to college. But understand this: college is、uh, part of your education, and so are schools. So it's the same thing. I don't think、uh, education needs to be just in preparation for something or get ready、uh, for college, and then college is ready for life. I believe education should be life. So college before college, college after college.、Uh, I think they are the same thing. It's life is an educational experience, and schooling should be much more relevant to life. And that what I means that in schools, I think all children from very early on needs to learn、uh, to learn something that's relevant, to doing something, to do something that's authentic, and、uh, to learn to serve other people. Well, thank you, Doctor Zhao. Now we will continue with our studio guest. Today, I have asked three of my classmates to come in and talk about how they think schools can. Support children in what they want to learn, rather than teaching them skills which is not necessarily important to them. Welcome, Renan, Sarah, and Harry, to their first podcast of education reimagined. Let me throw out this question: If you could reimagine education, what would it look like? I think that、uh, if I could reimagine education, I would stress、uh, math and reading and writing. But just as equally, I would also stress dance and arts and drama and music, and I'd allow the students to pick which one of their activities they have to most for most of the time. To most interest? Yes. Okay. So, and what about you, Renan? Well, if creativity were to be reimagined in my mind, it would look a lot different, but it would also have many similarities.、Uh, I would. I would encourage children to draw more and to and and to develop what they really like, like their strengths. And as Dr. Zhao advocates, we we have lots of things to improve on, and we have also gone very far with many things. So, Ryan, how would you how do you think schools can support better what children want to learn rather than just teaching them useless skills that won't go necessary in their life afterwards? Well. I think that schools don't encourage children's strengths as much as they should, but they how do you, how do you think you can improve that? Yeah,、like? I'm gonna get on that.、Uh, schools could dedicate more of their time to their students, and after all, it's our education. I see. So, Sarah, in our class, we talk a lot about student autonomy. How how do you think schools can better support student autonomy, and how do you think it could be used better in the future? I think student autonomy is useful because it makes the students learn what they want to learn and what they're passionate about. Do you think the school, the purpose of school today, is to get students to college? And do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Uh, yes, I do think that the purpose of schools today is to get people to college, and I don't think that that works anymore. Uh, before computers, uh, if you had a college education, you could get uh. Most, you could get most jobs, but now computers are taking up most of those jobs, and、uh, more and more people aren't getting jobs even though they went to college. So I think that instead, in schools instead of stressing on college, they should stress stress on what's going to happen after college, like on job skills and like some and what they're passionate about, so they can use that in the future. I see.、Um, so, Sarah, so can you emphasize more the point about why you think student autonomy should be more more used in the future? It should be used more in the future because it helps students learn their passion. What about you, Renan? What do you think? Well, <coughs> from I've from what I've seen so far, the short ten year ten years that I've lived. Uh, human evolution has gone really far, and I think that we could, we've gone really far, but we can go even further.、Um, humans are creatures meant to evolve and not to go backwards, so I think that w- that would benefit us more than doing what we normally do. 
I see. This has been one lively discussion today. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our teacher, Mrs. Terry Brose, for inspiring us to do this. Also, thank you for my teacher mentor, Miss Karen Davis, for being our executive producer and teaching me all about broadcasting. And a special thanks to Young Zhao for his wonderful ideas, his books about schools, for teaching us, and that change is necessary and good. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, Felipe. Well, I am Felipe Batista, and I say goodbye until next time. Education Reimagined is a podcast produced at the Miami Country Day School in Miami, Florida.